cooking with your girl Judy. Tonight I'm making a uh, gumbo. I'm gonna add uh, chicken and shrimp. And crab meat. Lump crab meat. Uh, you can add whole crabs if you want. But I'm going to put some lump crab meat. It's already cooked. And Polish kielbasa. You can add the andouille uh, sausages or... Um, just any kind of smoked sausage. I'm, I'm going to use a Polish kielbasa. I, I don't too particularly care for the andouille sausages. It's a little spicy. And I'm going to have enough spice in it. So I'm going to use the Polish kielbasa. And you're going to need two cups of oil. I'm using Crisco oil. And two cups of flour to make the roux. The root consists of uh, oil and flour, or butter and flour. But uh, I'm going to make it with oil and flour tonight. I like to uh, make the root with butter and flour when I'm making like macaroni and cheese or something. And uh, I'm going to get on the vegetables. I'm going to use all colors of vegetables. The uh, bell peppers, I'm sorry. Be green bell pepper, the orange, the yellow, and the red. I'm going to use those. I'm going to use the onion. Green onion. A clove of garlic. Celery. And for the... Okay, I guess this is a vegetable, isn't it? I'm going to use the Rotel Hot Diced Tomatoes. So that's going to be the spice, enough spice in it. Those andouille sausages, sausages are so hot. Uh, chicken broth. I have two chicken broth I'm going to use. Uh, Chef Paul Padon Seafood Magic. Cayenne pepper, that's another spice. Chef Paul Padon poultry magic. Kosher salt. Bay leaves. Accent. Slap your mama. Cajun season. You can use that or you can use the Tony Zachary. Zachary, I can't say that word. Tony Zachary, just any kind of Cajun seasoning. And I think that's it. I said chicken, shrimp, crab, and smoked sausage. Okay, that's it. I'm going to go and... Uh, Clean my shrimp, get those all cleaned up, get my chicken chopped up in cubes, uh, my Polish kielbasa, I'm going to get that chopped up, uh, my vegetables, I'm going to go ahead and chop my vegetables up, and I will be right back with you. Okay, I'm back. I'm going to uh, go ahead and make the roux. I put two cups of oil here, and I'm putting two cups of flour and before I put it in because you have to stir and stir and stir and stir the roux it takes about maybe 15 20 minutes I'm gonna put a little small pan of boiled okra on my kids don't eat okra and I do want okra in the gumbo so I'm gonna fix myself a plate then I'm gonna put some okra on top of it You know when you're children, you don't eat okra. But uh, I used to not eat okra, so I understand. I love okra now. Okay, I had to wrap that up and put that back in the freezer. 
put a little bit more water in here. I put water in my okra, uh, about a tablespoon of butter, and some kosher salt. And we'll put a top on it. Okay, the roux. You have to stick with this about 15, 20 minutes. Two cups of oil, two cups of flour. I'm gonna first start off with a whisk, breaking it up. And it was all purpose flour. And then I'm gonna continue stirring with a uh, wooden spoon. You have to start it out on medium. I'm not going to hold you here the whole 15 minutes I make this room, but I do want you to see how I start it off. The rules come in different colors, three colors actually. It comes in like a, a blonde color, like this is now, and then it comes in like a, it goes to a caramel color like a brown a caramel piece of chocolate caramel and uh, then it goes to like a darker brown and that's really what consistency and color I want to get it to the darker to the third stage and you have to stir don't let up off of it stir it for about 15 minutes So I'm going to be standing here for 15 minutes, and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm still stirring the roux. I've been stirring it now for about, about eight minutes. The first five minutes is blown. Uh, the next ten minutes, it turns like a caramel. And uh, roux are really tedious things to, thing to make. Uh, once you burn the roux, it's all over with. You have to start over. And you don't want the flour. The reason why you're stirring it, you don't want the flour to go to the bottom. So you have to keep stirring and stirring. It's about to get into the caramel stage. So uh, I'm going to keep stirring for maybe uh, seven, seven more minutes. And uh, listen, my sister had a talk with me she says Judy if you use that red pot and pan set I'm gonna come down there and I'm gonna get it that was my mama's pot and pan set that are red copper and I loved it because it cooked everything so good so before it got dark outside I went out to the barn and I got my other set I got sets of pot and pans down there but I don't like to go down there in the dark and uh, get it. And uh, I went out there to uh, get some of my Christmas things out, my Christmas tree and and my uh, Christmas ornaments and all my Christmas doodads. And uh, I saw this one sitting in there, the purple one. I got like five or six because I am a pot and pan fanatic. But I didn't know she felt that way about me. I love you, sissy. She told me if I use that red pot and pan set. But then I said on one of my videos, I said, I love this pot and pan set. It cooks so good. And uh, that same night I talked to her on the phone and she told me she didn't want me to uh, use that pot and pan set no more. So I got this one out and uh, we're going to make our gumbo in this one. And uh, I'll be right back. 
Okay, we've then got that roux to the right color. I think it's caramel, but I don't, I, it's good. It, it's good. It's not as dark. I don't want my roux too dark, but uh, I want my roux this color. I like this color for a roux. It's like in between caramel and the dark. And uh, I've done turned it off. I'm going to turn off the okra too. Because I don't want that to fall apart. And uh, I'm going to push that to the side. And uh, I'm going to pour. The roux into the pot that I'm going to make the gumbo in. And the root didn't stick. I got copper tunnel and some these this this cast iron skillet is about to break my hand in half. Okay. Now put the root there. Now I'm gonna start working on my vegetables. Because the vegetables have to go in. Well, I'm going to start working on my chicken. Because the chicken has to go in the oven. You can grill the, the chicken in a skillet or whatever. Just toss it around. But I prefer to put mine in the oven. So I'm going to chop it up uh, in squares and put it in the oven. I'm going to come back and let you see how I chop it up. And then I'm going to work on my vegetables. Okay. Now I'm chopping my chicken. My chicken has been clean. Washed thoroughly and clean. And I'm chopping it in pieces. Okay, and I'm going to put it on this pan right beside me. I'm going to put some olive oil on it. And uh, I've got two more pieces to go, and I'm going to go away and do that. Do that. And I'll be right back. Okay. Now I'm chopping my chicken. My chicken has been clean. Washed thoroughly and clean. And I'm chopping it in pieces. Okay, and I'm going to put it on this pan right beside me. I'm going to put some olive oil on it. And uh, I've got two more pieces to go, and I'm going to go away and do that. Do that. And I'll be right back. Okay, now that I'm through chopping my chicken in squares and pieces, I'm going to put a little extra virgin olive oil. On the chicken. I'm 
mama sprinkle a little. Slap your mama. Got a tablespoon. And I'm mixing it well. Then I'm going to stick it in the oven for about maybe 15, 20 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, loves, I'm back. Uh, I've started boiling my water for my rice. I've got three cups of water, a, a tablespoon of butter, and um, kosher salt, about a teaspoon of kosher salt. And I have rinsed my rice. I've got two cups of rice. I've rinsed my rice down to get some of the starch off of it. I don't know if you do it, but I do it. And uh, I'm going to put two cups of rice into three, three cups of water. And by the way, I met some new friends on YouTube called, uh, I think it's called Clear, Clear and Easy Cooking. Man, y'all should subscribe to their station. It's like they making love to the meat, uh, to the, uh, food. And they have some exquisite looking food. I mean, really good looking food. And, uh, I like that channel. And, um, uh, Y'all should go on there and subscribe and like some of the things they do. Clear and easy cooking. And it's like, I mean, they do crab cakes with uh, bell peppers and onions. And then they do it with uh, lemon, squeezed lemon in it. Oh, I tried that recipe and it was good. And uh, y'all should really check their channel out. They got some good really good looking food on their channel. It's it's just like amazing. And uh okay now let me get back to me. I'm gonna uh oil I put the rice in. Okay. And I'm gonna stir it around one time and that's it. It was boiling. I don't know what happened to it. I like to start it out on a hard boil. And then I like to turn it down and uh, put a top on it. Well, let me see. I'm going to put the top on it now because I don't have nowhere to put the top. And I'm going to go ahead and brown my sausages a little bit. Before I put them in there, I want them to have sort of like a sear to them. Okay, rice is boiling now. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it down low. We got that rice boiling. Them kielbasa sausage is searing. And let me see, I'm going to put them on low too. And we're going to step over here and cut up on our vegetables. Because they're the next thing that needs to go into this uh, uh, roux. The vegetables and the chicken broth. So I'm going to step over here. And start cutting up on my vegetables. And in this bowl, <clears throat> excuse me, I have fresh vegetables. I have already washed and seeded them, and I got them ready, getting ready to chop them up. I'm going to chop these babies up. I'm going to start, I've already started chopping the, the garlic. I didn't want y'all to see me do that, massacre that garlic, because I can't chop real good. Oh, and like on clear and easy cooking, 
Man, he be chopping this stuff up so delicately. I love that station. Okay. Chopping the uh, green onions up. And I'm not going to hold you as I do this. I'm going to bring you back when I finish chopping everything up. And uh, I'll be right back. Okay, I brought my roof to the front of the stove. And uh, I started warming it up again. I'm still stirring it. Uh, my sausages, kielbasa sausages, are back in the back getting all seared up. I'm going to turn them low. Now I'm going to pour in my chicken broth. I sort of turned my uh, rice off too late, but it's okay. I put a little water in it, sort of loosen it up. I got it a little, now I can make some good rice. And it's all fluffy, but uh, I turned it off too late. I normally don't boil it for about maybe 10 minutes, and then I turn it off, put the water in it, and I let it, uh, Hey, uh, excuse me, I'm doing a video. Uh-uh, no it's not. You you just want to do that. I'm doing this. Okay, turn that music off. Well, why y'all do that? Is it funny to you? Okay, I'm going to turn my sausages, my uh, kielbasa sausages off. Keep stirring the roux. So to get the uh, chicken broth and the uh, roux incorporated. Then I'm gonna drop my onions, bell peppers, and um, clove of garlic. Clove of garlic, uh, green onion, bell peppers, celery, and onion. This pot may not be big enough. I may have to, I hope it's big enough. But after the vegetables cook down, um, maybe it'll give me enough room to put the rest of the ingredients in here. Okay, there we go. All of it in. I think it'll be a big enough. Y'all want some children. Okay. I'm going to let you look over in that pot, that brew, and the chicken broth. That is simmering. I'm going to 
I'm gonna pour about a half a half a more, more, a little more of chicken broth in here. Half a more. Hey. Oh yeah, it's it's doing good. And I'm gonna turn my kielbasa. Well, I turned them off already. Okay. Then I'm fixing to start adding my seasonings. About a tablespoon of accent. Accent just enhances the flavor. About a teaspoon of kosher salt. Okay. I'm going to put the bay leaf in here, but I'm going to pull the bay leaf out before I serve it. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put the bay leaf after I put the, vet, uh, the, the meat in, so it'll be sitting on top, and then that way I can find it. Okay, bay leaf. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of magic poultry seasoning. Chef Paul Padone. About a teaspoon. Or more if you want it. It's just poultry season. Chef Paul Padone. Seafood magic. About a tablespoon. Cayenne pepper. About a teaspoon. Slap your mama. About a tea tablespoon. Rotel tomatoes, the hot kind, the whole can. Oh, that looks good. Hot. That looks really good. I'm gonna cook this for about an hour. I'm gonna put the uh, the um, chicken. Remember the chicken? I'm gonna put the chicken. this chicken sitting in the oven about 10 minutes. I'm going to put me some gloves on because I'm going to have to get my hands on it. Three pieces of chicken that we are uh, chopped. 
and square it up going in all except for that juice and I don't understand why the juice can't go in it's like a bra there we go and the sausages The seared kielbasa sausages. And I'm going to avoid getting the juice of, of that in here. And I'm going to have to get another pot. So when you come back, I have another pot. Because I'm going to have to put the rest of that chicken broth in here. And those shrimp. Shrimp going in last because it don't take shrimp long to cook. Okay. Okay, I got everything in here except for the shrimp. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. I'm going to remove the bay leaves. The bay leaves, this has been cooking for about maybe 45 minutes. It's supposed to cook an hour. And I had to put the bay leaves in about for 30 minutes. So I'm going to take the bay leaves out. I think I put four in there. Three, two, this is three. One of them may be lost, lost in space. Or maybe I put three. I put them on the top. Now I'm going to try to get the shrimp in this gumbo, along with the crab meat, the uh, lump crab meat. I'm gonna put the lump crab meat in first, and then I'm gonna put the shrimp in. I'm gonna try to get it in this boiler in about the next 15 minutes. Maybe it'll boil down some, but I doubt it. I've been adding the chicken broth as I've been going, so I got maybe about over half in there. So I'm gonna try to add the shrimp in there. My husband always telling me, you are always trying to fit Birmingham in Sylacauga. And I, I do it. I will do it. Meaning that Sylacauga is small and Birmingham is real big. So I try to put Birmingham and Sylacauga fit big and little. Wasn't funny. Okay. This is looking really, really good. I wish I had got a bigger pot. 
But uh, anyway, I took three bay leaves out. And I think that's maybe all I put in there. So I'm going to give it about maybe 15 more minutes to boil. And then I'll be right back. Okay. I tasted of it. And I really wasn't tasting, like I say, the love. I'm going to uh, put about a tablespoon of Obey in this gumbo. It was missing something. Maybe I didn't put enough uh, Chef Paul Perdome's seafood magic in there. But I, I think I want to go with the Obey. Obey is good. Gives it that seafood taste. And uh, it's been 15 minutes. And I've got a six ounce bag of crab meat that I'm going to put in here. Not enough to really notice. I like to uh, get crab and break it, clean it and break it in half and uh, put it in here, but I don't feel like digging around with crabs today. I'm going to put a little crab meat, about six ounces. And this done already dissolved. Okay, now I'm going to try to ease these shrimp in this pot. And this is going to be it after this. The shrimp don't take but about maybe oh, five minutes, five, ten minutes to cook. Oh, we. Okay. Few more to go. We gonna get them in there. Okay, I turned it down low so it won't splatter. Here we go. All right. Y'all, we got Birmingham and Sylacauga. There it goes. It's all the way up to the top. And as I serve some out, I'll just add the rest of the chicken broth. I'm going to put them down in there. So they can uh, cook because the shrimp will cook just with the heat of the uh, gumbo. So now we got about 10 minutes. I'm going to put a top back on it so it can hold the heat in there and the shrimp can cook. I'll be right back. Okay. Our gumbo is ready. I put a little rice in the bowl around side the uh, the bowl. See, I'm leaving that little hole there for my gumbo. And uh, the shrimp got done. Everything is done. And I'm going to put a little of this gumbo in that little center hole. Oh, yeah. Put a little juice around it. Put a little bit more shrimp in there. Then I'm going to take a little scoop of rice. I hate my rice uh, cooked too long. And put it there. Let me get a 
napkin and wipe the side of my bowl. And uh, I'm gonna get a little parsley. I put everything up. Here it is. I have a little box down there with my um, spices in it because I got too many spices in the cabinet. I love spices. I buy a spice in the store sometime and don't even need it. Okay. wasn't opened up. Okay. Put a little parsley on it. The top just to give it a little pretty color. Oh, that's pretty. Take my spoons out. And I'm gonna let y'all take a peek at my rice and gumbo. And there it is. Shrimp, chicken, crab meat. Shrimp, chicken, crab meat. Um, oh, kielbasa sausages. And that's how you, I make gumbo. Okay, I'm going to go away and let it cool a little bit. I want a taste of it. And I'll be right back. Plus, I'm going to make me a thumbnail. I've learned how to do thumbnails. And uh, I'm learning a lot with my camera and my phone. And I got a new phone, too. So I'm learning a lot. And I'm having fun with it. So I'll be right back. Let me get a thumbnail. Okay, now that it's cooled down, I'm going to try it. Get a little shrimp here. A big shrimp. Rice. Mmm. Mmm, mmm. Oh, that's good. I taste that old base seasoning in here. Oh, yeah. I'm tasting the seasoning. Mmm. This is real good. Oh, it's good and spicy. Ooh, hot, too. This is real good. I miss Skyla. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like. Comment. Subscribe to my video. I put something on Facebook today about uh, 
liking and subscribing. It don't cost nothing to subscribe and like to these videos, comment or whatever. It don't cost not one dime. So y'all go on, pull me up, cooking with Judy Caldwell, and like and subscribe. Do the right thing. I'm trying to get at least uh, a thousand subscribers by um, Christmas. So, and at least, um, you don't even have to say happy birthday to me on Facebook. Just go on my page and and uh, on my channel and like and subscribe and comment. You don't have to do all that birthday stuff. That'll be a birthday gift from me. For me. To you. For, let it be a birthday gift from, from you to me. And a Christmas gift if I get a thousand subscribers. So, Go on there and uh, do the right thing. And uh, y'all stay humble. That's the best thing in the world, to humble yourself. Be blessed. And um, y'all have a good night. Y'all ain't got to go home. But you got to get out of here. Mm-mm. Bye for now.